You're playing around with a powerful complex image classification model and training it in Colab Notebook or Kaggle Kernel. But it takes hours to train with the free GPUs. Stay tuned to learn how you can instantly scale to train with more data and more GPUs. Hi, I'm Priyanka Vergadia, and in this video, we are going to learn how to scale machine learning training resources using TensorFlow Cloud. Let's say you're playing around with a powerful complex image classification model such as NASNet and training it in Colab. It takes a couple of hours to train with a free GPU that Colab gives you. Also, it may not even be feasible to train on large data sets because the training could go over the free 12 hours window. Wouldn't it be nice if I could instantly scale to train on a large scale with more data and more GPUs? And once you have the model trained, you often need to run multiple experiments to fine tune and optimize the hyperparameters to continue to improve your model. Hundreds of runs are needed sometimes to find the setting that results in the best accuracy. If you participate in a competition on Kaggle, you know that often very small accuracy differences separate winners on the leaderboard. This kind of experimentation takes a very long time and a lot of resources. Wouldn't it be nice if you could run all these experiments concurrently using more resources? Well, that's where TensorFlow Cloud comes in. It's a client-side library for training your TensorFlow model on Vertex AI. It provides APIs for seamless transition from local debugging to distributed training and hyperparameter tuning in Google Cloud. You can directly use it from a Colab notebook or Kaggle kernel. It handles the cloud-specific tasks such as creating virtual machine instances and setting distribution strategies for your models automatically. And for distributed tuning jobs, TensorFlow Cloud sets up model callbacks to capture model checkpoints and TensorFlow logs automatically. Now, I'm sure you're excited to see how it works, so let's take a peek into it. First, we will run the initial one-time setup to make sure the Google Cloud assets are all configured. We set up the project in cloud.google.com console and grab the project name and the project number. In the Colab or Kaggle notebook you're using, plug those in. Link to this Colab is included in the description below. Then make a choice depending on where you're running the notebook. I'm using Colab here, so I will set up auth for Colab Notebook. You can do the same for Kaggle. You need a billing account attached to your Google Cloud project, so the next step is to link that billing account. When you entered your credit card information during Google Cloud sign up, it created a default billing account for you. That's the one we're going to use. Next, enable the required Cloud API, including the Vertex AI in Training Jobs API, which will allow us to kick off the training jobs within Google Cloud and the Cloud Build API to build our Docker images. We create a storage bucket in this step to store our temporary assets and to save the model checkpoints. Now, if you're going to also perform hyperparameter tuning jobs, then we need a service account, which is a special kind of account used by the TensorFlow Cloud Tuner to create the hyperparameter tuning jobs within Vertex AI. In this step, we are creating that service account and providing it to the right access to create the job. At this point, we have our setup complete with a project in Google Cloud, a service account that will create jobs in Vertex AI, and the cloud storage bucket that will store our model assets. We can reuse this setup with various notebooks. In each notebook, you will need to repeat the step two to add the Google Cloud auth credentials to your notebook. This will allow your notebook to connect to your project. Now that the setup is out of the way, let's run some distributed training and see how TensorFlow Cloud helps scale the distributed training using resources in Google Cloud. This example is based on image classification via fine tuning with EfficientNet to train a NASNet mobile model. First step, import all the requirements. Then set the project parameters that we got from our setup notebook and authenticate the notebook to our Google Cloud project. Then we load and prepare the data, split it into training and test data sets. Add a pre-processing layer API for image augmentation, for image resizing, rotation, flipping, and contrast. Next, we load the model and prepare for training. Here, we load a NASNet model, pre-trained model with weights, and unfreeze a few layers for fine-tuning the model to better match the data set. 
Then we train the model using model.fit. But notice the remote function. It determines whether code is being executed locally or on the cloud and allows for the separate destination of fit parameters for local and remote execution. Now we're ready to train the model remotely on Google Cloud Platform. We submit a training job using this step where we define the parameters within the run function. Our distribution strategy, requirements for any custom models, Docker configuration, and master and worker machine configurations. Once done, we can monitor our job in TensorBoard. This may take a few minutes since the logs start to populate once the training begins. Now that we know how to kick off a training job using TensorFlow Cloud, let's look at executing a distributed hyperparameter tuning job. All right, so this example, which is also included in the link below, is based on Keras Tuner Cypher 10 sample. We need the same kind of setup to refer to our Google Cloud project as we did in the training job, but here we're also using the service account. Then we set the tuning specific parameters, authenticate the notebook like we did earlier, load and prepare the data, define the model architecture and hyperparameters using the Keras Tuner. Then we configure the Cloud Tuner for both remote and local execution. The main difference between the two is really the distribution strategy. You should run the search locally to verify it works before submitting the job for remote execution. Make sure to stop the job before you actually run it remotely. Then we start the remote trainer using the function run Cloud Tuner. Here, we prepare our code from this notebook for remote execution in Google Cloud and start NumJobs parallel runs remotely to train the model. Once the jobs are submitted, we can monitor their progress via TensorFlow. The logs start populating when at least one job has started training. Here, I have a tensor board for an already completed job where we see which parameters work best, the learning rate, the conf block, dropout rate, using filters per convolution layers seems to give the highest accuracy. In this episode, we talked about scaling the machine learning training resources using TensorFlow Cloud. Give it a try yourself. The GitHub link is in the description below and let me know how it goes in the comments. If you have any questions, reach me on Twitter at pvergadia.